this is not your average Excel tutorial. I don't want you to just follow commands and jump through rings. I want you to have a deep understanding of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how it works. Imagine you have a spreadsheet with a list of birds, and you want Excel to automatically know if the bird should be labeled as cool or as not cool. This can be accomplished using the VLOOKUP function. You can think of the VLOOKUP function as a set of instructions that you are providing Excel. In order to get you what you need, Excel is going to need a little bit of help. First, you're going to need to tell Excel where to look for the birds. Second, you're going to need to provide Excel with a list of every bird that it might encounter. Third, on the same list, you're going to want to specify whether each of those birds are either cool or not. Lastly, you want to tell Excel to follow your instructions really closely or to use its best judgment. Once Excel has this information, it will be able to label your birds while you kick back and relax. So now we're gonna actually dive into a spreadsheet to go through the nitty gritty of how you would actually perform the VLOOKUP and how you would get Excel to do your work for you. So you can see, I've got a data set here with a bunch of different bird names. Um, they've got their color, their height, and what I want to determine is we're gonna call it the coolness scale. And I'm gonna label each one as either cool or not cool is what I'm going for with the end goal. So in the example that we talked about in the intro, we said that we would need to list every single bird type that Excel would see, along with if it's cool or if it's not cool. And in order to do that, we're actually gonna open up a whole other tab. And on this new tab that we've made, I'm gonna make two columns. The first one, I'm gonna label bird name, and the second one, I'm gonna write cool or not cool. I'm gonna go back to the data tab that contains my whole list. And you'll see that on the list, there's maybe four or five different types of birds. Now there's two ways that I can go about this. I could go into the set of instructions for the VLOOKUP and I could write out finch, crow, robin, and so forth. But actually, if you wanna save some time, there's a more efficient way to go about this. Returning to the data tab, I'm gonna highlight all of the birds in my list and I'm gonna go ahead and do command copy I'm gonna then go back to the set of instructions tab and I'm gonna right click, paste. And what I've done here is I've gotten every single possible bird that is in my list of data. And what I'm gonna to wanna to do is make sure that there's just one of each so that there's no uh, repeats. So to do this with every bird name highlighted, you're gonna click the data tab up top, click remove duplicates, I'm gonna leave it with, um, just continue with the current selection, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish this by clicking remove duplicates. Hit okay. And you can see that Excel has gotten rid of all of the repeats. This is every bird that's in that list. The second thing that we talked about in our example is you need to go through and you need to distinguish if Excel should t call each bird cool or not cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and say next to each one at my discretion, I'm gonna write cool. Robins are definitely not cool. Crows are pretty cool. And then penguins are definitely cool. That was an easy one. So now I've got my set of instructions perfectly ready for the VLOOKUP to function. So we're gonna to return to the data tab. Under the new column that I created to put the VLOOKUP, I'm gonna click equals VLOOKUP and then I'm gonna go ahead and open up the parentheses. And you're gonna notice within the function, when you start it and open the parentheses, Excel begins to tell you what it's looking for. It says that it wants a lookup value, a table array, a column index number, and a range lookup. And initially that's not gonna make a lot of sense because we're not familiar with what that means, but it's actually exactly what we went through in that example earlier in the video. Lookup value is Excel asking you, what in the current tab do you want it to look for to label? So in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and click A2, which is the bird name. We're gonna go ahead and click a comma, which is going to have Excel move to the table array. Table array is essentially Excel saying, give me that cheat sheet that I need in order to give you an answer. So to do that, we're actually going to click on the second tab that we made with our little cheat sheet for Excel. And I'm gonna highlight all of A, and I'm gonna drag my cursor over to column B. 
So you can see within the formula that it says sheet two, which is the sheet that I'm currently on. And then all of column A and all of column B are highlighted. And you can see that because they're separated by a colon. And honestly, a table array is just that cheat sheet. So once you have that highlighted, you're gonna go ahead and click comma, and it's gonna move you to column index number. Now column index number trips a lot of people up, but it's really quite straightforward. On our cheat sheet, we have got columns A and B, which we previously established. All Excel is asking you for right now is which of these two columns do you want it to return when it finds the bird name? So in this example, we want it, once it finds the name Finch, to return cool or not cool. Excel sees column A as a one and column B as a two. And because we want it to return the value in column B, we're gonna put a two in our formula and we're gonna end that with a comma. The last thing that we talked about in our example was telling Excel whether you want it to follow your instructions super precisely or if you want it to kind of use its best judgment. This last parameter, range lookup, is you telling Excel which of those two um, strictness levels to follow. So if you type in true, that's telling Excel, eh, use your best judgment. Um, if it's close, that's good enough. And typing in false means, no, you need to look exactly for the name Finch, and you need to return it only if you find the word Finch exactly. I'm gonna be honest with you, in all my years with Excel, I have only ever wrote down false at the end of a view lookup. I've never had to use true. So when in doubt, type out false, and then we're gonna close our parentheses because that was the last thing and click enter. Now you can see here that for all that work, Excel just returned cool, which you might say, wow, I could have just typed that out a lot faster. But the beauty of this is that we can now go to the bottom right of this formula and you'll see that my cursor goes from a little glove to the black kind of T when I get over it. And I'm gonna drag down what we just did um, till the end where my last bird name is. I'm gonna let go of my cursor and you can see that Excel has gone through and labeled every single bird based on the cheat sheet that we gave it in tab two. It's important to note now that when you want to make adjustments to your view lookup, you don't need to go into each cell and type out, hey, this robin is all of a sudden cool. By doing that, if you look at the top bar where it's written out, you can see that I've got the view lookup that I made. And now in this new um, space where I just wrote cool, it breaks the view lookup because I put down text. Instead, what we want to do is go to the cheat sheet and change how we said Excel should label these. So we're gonna switch this to really not cool. These robins are never cool. We're gonna click enter. And then when we return to our data tab, you'll see that everything updated here. Now let's just say that you wanted to add something to your view lookup. That's no problem at all. Let's just say that we want to type in sparrow. It's a new type of bird. Um, and, I, and we want it to automatically shoot out uh, if it's cool or not, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my view lookup down and you'll see that we're getting a hashtag NA. And what that really means is the VLOOKUP is saying, hey, when I look in the cheat sheet, I'm not finding it at all. And that's a super easy solution. I bet you, you can probably guess what we're gonna do. You can copy this. I'm gonna just paste it into the cheat sheet, we'll call it. And then you can label it however you choose. And you can see that the view lookup automatically brings back the value that you set. Now, I understand that the example that we just went through is a little bit of an oddball, but mastering view lookups is a cornerstone to Excel. You could have a list of employees and with any parameter really, but let's just say their output or how much they're producing for you. And let's just say that you wanted to know what shift has more output. Well, you could go ahead and make a view lookup write down all of their names, write AM, PM, you know, whatever shift everybody works. You could quickly write the V lookup. And then when you go into your data here, you can filter by what you just produced in the V lookup and you could see what shift is producing more for you. You could have a whole list of products that you sell 
categorize them by what they do to tell you which type of product you sell the most of. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Make sure to put any questions in the chat below and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one.